What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for beginners. Episode number three today will be about operators and user inputs. Now in the last video we talked about variables and data types in Python and today we're going to cover the different categories of operators we have because they will allow us to perform actions on and with our values. So in this video we're going to get an overview over the different types of operators and how to use them. So let's get started and let's start with the arithmetic operators because we've already used some of them in the last video and these operators are used for calculations and you probably know most of them so from mathematics for example because we have basic addition we have subtraction we have multiplication division so these four basic calculation types four basic arithmetic operators and i think you should know how they work so when we have print uh, for example, 8 over 2, this would give us 4. 8 plus 2 would give us uh, 10. Minus 2 would give us 6. And times 2 would give us 16. So these are just basic mathematical arithmetic, arithmetic operators. So besides that, however, we also have uh, three other operators that you might not be familiar with. So the first one is the so-called modulus operator. It's a percent character and it's used to get you the remainder of a division so let's say you have a uh, print 10 modulus 3 what this would give you is 1 because when you divide 10 by 3 you get uh, 3 as a whole number and the remainder of 1 so modulus always gives you the remainder if you were to say uh, 11 modulus 3 this would give you 2 and 12 would again give you 0 because uh, 12 is divisible by 3. So you can print that. Let's do this with 11 and print the result. As you can see, 2 is the result. So if you want to get the remainder, you use the modulus operator. Then we also have the exponent operator. So if you want to take one number to the power of another number, you can use the exponent operator. These are two multiplication signs. So uh, I could say, I don't know, 2 to the power of 5, for example. So I use 2 times the multiplication sign, and as you can see, it works. I just have to say 2 to the power of 5, and it's like dividing 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 5 times and so on. So very simple, actually. Now, the last arithmetic operator is the floor division. And the floor division, what it does is it divides two numbers and rounds down the result. So a floor, di a floor division of... 10 over 3, uh, this is the operator for the floor division, 10 over 3 uh, would be, would give us uh, the value of 3 because it rounds down to 3. However, if we were to say minus 10 uh, floor division 3, what it does is it gives us minus 4 because it's the smaller number. So it doesn't round up to minus 3, but it rounds down to minus 4 because, you know, it's just always rounding down to the smaller number. So the next type of operators are the assignment operators. We already know the simplest assignment operator, namely the equal sign. So when we say x equals 10, this here is an assignment operator, the equal sign. It just assigns the value on the right uh, to the object, to the element on the left. So uh, quite simple. But what we can also do is we can combine this uh, assignment operator with all the arithmetic operators. So uh, let's say I have the variable x equals 10 and I want to add uh, 10 to this number. What I could do is I could say x equals x plus 10. And now when I print uh, x, this would give me a result of 20, of course. But I can also use an operator for this, namely plus equals. So I can say x plus equals 10 and this would do the absolute same thing. So it would just add 10 to the variable. And I can do this with all the um, operators. So all the arithmetic operators, I can say minus equals 10, which would give us uh, zero and so on. I could go and say times equals 10, this would give us 100, divided equals 10, it this would give us one. So it always stores the result of the calculation in the variable. And of course I can also do this with modulus and with the exponentiation and with the floor division. So these are the assignment operators combined or the assignment operator combined with all the arithmetic operators. 
Comparison operators are the next category that we're going to talk about. The result of a comparison operation always returns a boolean, so either true or false. Now, the comparison operators are equals, not equals, less than, greater than, less or equal to, and greater than or equal to. So these are the operators and we always use them to uh, compare the two sides. So we have an element on the left and we have an element on the right and we compare them in some way. And if this comparison matches reality, we return true or the operation returns true. Otherwise it returns false. So for example, let's say we have a variable x equals 10 and y equals 20. And now I could print x equals y. Of course, this does not match reality, so it will return false. However, if I say x is less than y, it would give us a true. Also, if I say x is less or equal to y, it, was, it would give us true. And if I say x is not equal to y, it would also give us a true, as you can see. Of course, we can also do this with strings. So if I have the string, hello, I'm always using the same string, and the string, hi, I can use uh, this to check if the two strings are the same. So in this case, not, but if I was to say, okay, hello and hello, this would return true. Now to combine these comparisons, we can use the last type of operators that we're going to talk about in today's video, the logical operators. These logical operators are and, or, and not. And they are used to logically connect comparisons. So when we say one comparison and another comparison, for example, 10 is less than 20 and, uh, I don't know, 20 is less than 30, this would have uh, the AND operator returns true whenever both sides return true. So in this case, both statements are true and uh, the whole statement would be true. However, if one statement is wrong, for example, 20 is greater than 30, which would, which would return false, uh, the whole statement is false. So the AND operator demands both sides to be true. This is not the case when I use the OR operator because the OR operator says at least one side has to be true. So this here would return true because this statement is still true. Even though this statement is false, it doesn't matter because the OR operator only wants one statement, at least one statement to be true. So it's always true when one statement is true, but also when both statements are true. But when both statements are false, it is also false. And the NOT operator is actually quite simple. Whenever we have some uh, Boolean, we just negate it. So not true would be false, of course. Uh, not 10 is less than 20 would also be false. And not 1 is greater than 22 would give us true because it's false, but not negates it. So we always get the opposite. Now, actually, we have two more operator categories, namely membership operators and bitwise operators. We will cover membership operators when we get to sequences because they're interconnected with this topic. And bitwise operators are basically operators that are used for calculations and logical operators with binary numbers. Since this topic is very technical and we won't need it for a very long time, we're not going to talk about these in this video. It would just confuse a lot of people and it's not necessary. However, if you're deeply interested in it, feel free to Google them. You should be able to catch up with the topic quite quickly. It's not that complicated, but I just don't think it's useful right now. Now, last but not least, let's get to user input. Up until now, we've always defined values directly in our code, but sometimes we might get values from outside the code. For example, when we load data or when the user inputs uh, something into the script. This is done by user input and in Python, we use the input function to allow a user to input a value. So this is the input function and this input function always returns uh, the value that the user enters. So I can save the value that the user enters into a variable. So in this case, when I run the script, very simple, um, nothing happens because I can enter a value. So I can say, for example, 
hello or 10 or true or whatever. Um, and this would be stored in a variable. Of course, we don't see it. But the catch here is that it's always stored as a string. So even if I enter 10 or true, it is always a string. So if you want to uh, deal with it and further process it, we need to typecast values. So if we want to enter true and treat it as a Boolean, we have to typecast it into a Boolean. And with numbers, it's the same. Now we can specify a message in these parentheses. For example, enter number one. And then I could go ahead and say y equals input enter number two. And now what I can do is I can typecast them. So as we learned in the last video, x equals int x and y equals int y. And now I can just print the result. So x plus y. And this would be a simple adder script where we can add the numbers. So enter number 1, 55, and 22 would give us 77. So that's everything that we need to know about operators and user inputs for now. In the next video, we will build on the knowledge of operators and use if statements to make our code more conditional. So keep going because there is much more to learn here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more and feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.